Hey friends, it is time, it's the time of year when our family, our children, and our, Mr. Patient and I have always just kind of calmed down. We pull out the puzzles, we pull out the um, Christmas stockings, and of course we pull out the heritage holiday season recipes. Heritage Ways. I'm Miss Katie, and this is where we honor home, celebrate heritage, and spread hope. This is our house, our new house, new old house, that we bought um, here in a village uh, right on the edge of Amish country, Ohio. We've just moved this summer from Middle Tennessee, where we've lived all our lives, and now we are here in Amish country, Ohio. And we've named our house Heritage House. A village homestead because that's what it is it's a village homestead in progress in work in progress so welcome here to heritage house kitchen and today I am uh, making a <laughs> it's a heritage recipe but I know y'all have heard of it because a popular cereal company um, made it uh, popular and famous this time of year but my great-grandmother whose given name was brownie that was her given name at birth, Brownie. Brownie Trousdell. Well, Trousdell was her maiden name, Brownie Hobbs Trousdell. And so she, she made this. So I don't really know when the cereal company started putting it on their boxes or what have you. But it is right there on the um, Chex cereal box. But my recipe is a little bit different and um, it's actually in my cookbook. This is my cookbook from Katie's Kitchen, Volume 1, and um, y'all have asked, several have asked, and I do hope to have, Lord willing, I'm, I would like to say 2021, but I'm not sure that's going to happen, so 2021, 2022, uh, maybe the second one will come out then, but I have so many ideas for other books in my head too, so all that's going along around in my head. On page 34 is called, it's Party Mix. Now that's what my family called it. Actually, my mama also called it Nuts and Bolts. Um, I think it's called different things. But I call it Party Mix. And um, this is my mother's, actually it says on here. Because in my cookbook I tell, I, I tell background of the recipes, where I got them, stories of the recipes, and that kind of thing. This makes 13 cups, and I said my great-grandmother, Brownie Hobbs Trousdale, and my grandmother and my mother used this recipe, and I made a couple of adjustments, um, mainly adding more spice than it called for. And I usually add even more than what my cookbook says, honestly. So this is what we're making today, and um, you've probably had it, you've probably made it, but I encourage you to just follow along, just to um, be welcomed into my home, into my kitchen. I wish you could just have a seat right there at the bar and we could chat while I'm making this, but we can't, so here you are, and let's just chat and make some uh, Chex Mix today, or Nuts and Bolts, or Party Mix. Also, I am going to um, give a shout out to my friends at Two Family Homestead, fellow Ohioans, and uh, I, uh, I, I giggle because it's, it's still new to me to say I'm an Ohioan. It's very, very, <laughs> I'm getting used to that. But uh, so Sherry has got a collaboration right now, a holiday collab 2020. And I am uh, going to include this video in that uh, collaboration of just favorite um, family holiday snacks or foods. So thanks to Sherry and Daryl for putting together that collaboration. And um, I hope you enjoy those videos that are on that playlist. I know I've already enjoyed two of them so far. So thanks a lot for that. Let's get started making the Chex Mix. I'll give you measurements here in a minute. I'll let you know so you can jot those down. Or if you have the cookbook, you don't have to worry about it. But um, I've got the pretzels. I've got the cheese crackers. We'll talk about that in a minute. And I've got the mixed nuts. And I've got these different kinds of cereal. 
So right now I'm gonna move this out of the way because I've got my butter melting in the oven. Now I'm using one of those dark roasting pans and in the recipe, <clears throat> my mother had a notation in the recipe that says don't use a dark uh, roasting pan because it would burn. Well, I have always used the uh, dark roasting pan uh, for 30 years. Can't believe I've been cooking for a family for that long, but I have. But anyway, um, and it's never burned. The key is to just stir it every 15 minutes for an hour. So I've got it on 250. And I just put this in straight away. <clears throat> um, one stick of butter while the oven was melting. So I've got this just general, you know, roasting pan with a stick of butter. And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add the seasonings. Okay, so I did all that talking and my battery went wonky and it didn't record what I just now said. So we'll say all that again that it didn't record. So <clears throat> I use a metal spoon to stir this because um, it has the edge that's better than a wooden spoon. Also, I have melted my one stick of butter in my pan. It calls for a teaspoon of Worcestershire. I, uh, I have just put about two uh, teaspoons because I like it spicier. And I usually use Bragg's Liquid Aminos and I couldn't find mine right now. Um, I think I'm out. Garlic powder, it calls for half a teaspoon of garlic powder. So I did that. It's not garlic salt. Now you can use garlic salt, but I choose garlic powder because it makes it less salty. Celery salt, I do use that. Not celery seed, but celery salt. Half a teaspoon of that. And then, the uh, onion powder. Now, see, my onion powder clumps because it's it's the, um, the sugar in it, I guess. Makes it clump. But a half a teaspoon of that. Okay, so I've got all that. Now, you know what you can do? You can put taco seasoning instead, or different seasonings, or all garlic, or all onion, no onion, no garlic. It's very flexible. Now, if it burns, what's gonna burn is the, are the solid uh, pieces of the butter. So that's why you stir it every 15 minutes for an hour. Two cups of cheese crackers, any kind of cheese crackers, like the fish shape or whatever. Now, when I was growing up, and my uh, the women in my family made this, they had, they put tidbits. I think um, maybe Nabisco made those. And I loved those things. I, they were just like tube looking crackers. That used to be my favorite part of this. But I don't think they make them anymore. Okay, then um, two cups of pretzels. I use, I use the sticks and I use the traditional pretzel shape. One cup of each is what I do. A cup and a half, in no particular order am I adding these things, a cup and a half of mixed nuts or any kind of nut salted that you like. If you wanna just put, there've been times when I put um, extra pecans or extra cashews or all peanuts, just, just a mixture, just whatever you have. I have made this through the years so many different ways, y'all. Um, and the family just loves it. And then I've got a total of two cups of um, O-shaped cereal, which is basically, uh, you know, Cheerios. This is generic. Um, two cups of Kix, which I've never seen generic Kix before, just the balls. And then, as you can see when I pour it, I've got four total cups of the toasted squares. So any combination of corn, wheat, or rice. What I do is a cup of wheat, because I find that the family doesn't typically like the wheat necessarily. Um, then I do two cups of the rice and one cup of the corn. But anyway, four total cups of the, of the toasted squares. Now, my favorite part of this as an adult, since I don't have the tidbits anymore, are the kicks. I love, that's my favorite part. 
So, I've never found um, generic kicks. So, every Christmas season, I splurge and get the, you know, name brand kicks. K-I-X. You're going to stir it well. So, I'm going to put it in the oven for an hour total. But I'm going to set the timer, and every 15 minutes, I'm going to stir it. Um, you don't want to leave your oven door open, so you might want to pull it out, stir it on top of the stove, put it back in every 15 minutes. And like I said, 250, 250, because you're slow roasting. And then I want to show you how I, what I do with it um, to cool it after it comes out of the oven. <coughs> Okay, per usual in my house, <laughs> stuff always happens. Like, wah, wah, wah. Um, okay, I am about to take this out of the oven and I laid out my newspapers. Okay, um, the kids are decorating gingerbread houses over here on the bar. I'm going to show you. And I laid out my newspapers, and what I typically do to save um, paper towels so that I don't have to buy reusable stuff is I typically use like my cloths like this, get it away from the food, you know, just like a cheesecloth type uh, bar, what do you call it, bartender cloth or whatever. So I opened my drawer over here where. I'll just show you. Excuse my dirty bowl. So I opened my drawer in my white rice flour that I had in my drawer. It's my ferment materials and then my sourdough stuff and all that. Anyway, mice, apparently, that I didn't know I had, had eaten through this in my kitchen drawer. Oh my goodness. Okay, I know that's not what the video is about, but we're also about real life here. So, having said that, I'm laying down those pa uh, paper towels after all. But I just wanted to point out to y'all that you could use towels like I always have done. Now I've got drawer cleaning out to do today. That was not on the agenda. But you know, when you live in a rural area, or maybe even not a rural area, I don't even know. Do you city folks have mice? I don't remember having mice the once or twice we lived in the city. Okay, now, <laughs> now I pour out the Chex Mix on here. Now typically I, I would lay it on the big area and then when I asked him if they wanted to decorate the houses I forgot that I had to do this. So I'm just gonna kind of pour like this and I'm gonna lay it out to dry to cool rather. And then I'm gonna put it in an airtight mouse proof container. <laughs> Little Miss is laughing. It's not funny. Hi. I know. It's so sorry I laughed. Oh, well, I'm sorry I have mice that I didn't know I had. I know because we have mouse holes downstairs. Well, but downstairs is not upstairs. Okay, this is it kind of spread it out to let it cool. I have a lining of, of newspaper and then I'll, two layers of paper towel. And if I were using my clean cloth like I've done in the past, then I, um, you know, would just wash the cloth no problem. We have a video, three, a video series of how to make the gingerbread house pieces but we actually had these kits left over from RV life last year, so they're putting those together this year. So there we have it. We have our party mix, and my favorite part is the kicks balls. I'm curious to know what your favorite part is. What's your favorite part of it, little buddy? The little pretzels. The pretzel shape or the sticks? Sticks. What's your favorite part, little Missy? I think I gotta agree with you. I like the, the balls. Kicks balls. It's good, it's spicy, 
a little buttery. It is great to have as a snack, and it's essential around here these days, holidays. Talk to y'all later. Remember, faith over fear and truth and freedom are worth fighting for. Y'all remember that. Love y'all. Bye-bye.